Hi guys, um, I hope you're having an awesome Thursday. Um, I just wanted to make a brief little video because um, I had something come up in my um, online community that I have here on Facebook, our private group um, that is just a, um, some of you guys are in it, and um, it's, it's just a, a place of support um, and um, sweaty pictures and recipes and um, just a place for us to check in each day and um, be there for each other and grow on this journey together. Um, but one of my girls in there, um, one of my clients, um, she had shared that um, you know she really she really was vulnerable with us and she shared a different. A, a different take on you know before and after pictures and she said this is not you know your traditional before and after um, you know collage that you normally see because she shared you know her original before picture and then um, an after of when she had lost you know a great amount of weight and a lot of inches and then shared another picture which was um, you know of her recently um, that she had gained you know the weight back and you know that um, it's a it's a common thing, you know, and and it's a hard thing, um, and you know what I shared with her was was something that I I felt like it maybe it was necessary to um, share with you guys too. Maybe it's something that other people um, you know could hear, um, learn from, take any take any tips away from. Um, so what I shared with her was that. The reason why this happens, you know, it's 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 so it's so natural and it's so common because, um, you know, when we're in that fight and we're in that journey to lose the weight, it's like the whole time the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, the very top, and you know the climax of it all is when we let's just say twenty pounds, you know, for an example, is when we finally see that scale that we've lost that 20 pounds when we finally see, um, you know, those pants that finally fit. Or if you are, you know, sweating for your wedding and you feel great at your wedding and then you put that limit on yourself. You know, you said, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to look good for the wedding. I want to look good because I am in a wedding. Um, or I want to, you know, I'm training for my 30th birthday, you know, things like that. And it's, it, it, there's a difference between training for something and using that as fire and using that as a goal. But then as soon as it happens, and even before it approaches, you have to have that next game plan. You have to have the next, what's next, what's next. Um, or what happens is you kind of get to hang out in that body that, you know, you get to reap the benefits of that hard work that you did and you get to enjoy it. And, um, you know, you're kind of doing the same things and, and, you know, eating similar foods, um, and maybe getting in a couple workouts, you know, a week as opposed to the five or six, you know, that you were doing. And then a couple weeks go by and then maybe a couple months. And then all of a sudden you just don't feel good anymore. And you, you start noticing that you're grabbing, you know, um, looser pants and you're not grabbing your jeans out anymore and you know you're like I'm gonna wear leggings again or I'm gonna wear the skirt again because it's comfortable in my stomach you know it's things like that and it's because it's so easy to get comfortable and I think there's that issue with everything in life and you know that's what my input was to her as her coach and as her friend was that um, that is it's so easy and it's really common and that that's why we have to have that mindset of I am training for this this is my goal but I want this to be a lifestyle because you have to think how good you feel in those moments and you have to think about how good you feel when you finish that workout you have to think how good you feel when you post that before and after picture or you can see it in your face you can you know, you can, or when your husband tells you he sees your progress, like live in those moments and and rejoice in those moments and and live for them and say, this is what I want, this is how I want to feel, and then when you reach it, it's like, what's next? You know, what can I do? Or can I pay this forward? Can I help other people feel this way too? And so what it is is it's like 
in your marriage, like if you're in a relationship and your boyfriend and girlfriend, and you know that your you know wedding is coming up, and um, you know your wedding's coming up, and um, then you you start planning and you're busy doing that together. But as your boyfriend and girlfriend, you are um, I, you're it's it's a new thing, and so you are doing like extra love and affection and massages and extra gifts and you're going out to dinner more and you're complimenting each other more and you know that that just extra energy is there and that fight and um, just that impressing you know all that stuff and then you get married and you're like okay so this this was the big thing like this was it you know and so now we can sit back because it's like all that stuff was for this and so, okay, we can just kind of like sit back and chill now, but that's not the case, you know? And so you have to continue to do things so that you don't just sit back and chill because then when you just sit back and chill and you don't put the work in, what happens? You start turning into a slob and, you know, you can think of that physically, emotionally, mentally, however, but if you just sit back and don't do anything, you turn into a slob and you turn into, um, you know, a ball of just not making any effort. And so nothing is going to get better. How can anything get better if you're just sitting back and in chill mode? So when you get married, you have to think like, what's next? What, what next? What is there next for us? You know, like my husband and I have gone to marriage encounters and marriage seminars and stuff and not because it's like in need of marriage counseling, but it's because like, well, what else can it do for us? Like what fire can it bring to us? Um, what more can they teach us? You know, what more, I mean, we're, we're always need to be learning, you know, we're coming up on 10 years married. Um, but when it's 50 years, like there's still going to be lessons to be learned. And I hope that, you know, we are still open to, you know, being old farts and having people tell us, you know, their stories and, you know, their ideas about something or, you know, whatever it is. And so it's the same thing in our journey. It's the same thing in all of our areas of life, really. And it's like, you can't just reach a point and say, I'm just going to sit back and chill because then that's what you're going to do. Like there's nothing can get better because you just openly said, this was my goal. So I'm just going to hang out here now. Um, and you have to continue to put that effort in and you have to continue. So losing weight is really hard. I've been there a lot. Um, altogether, I've lost a hundred pounds, um, in, in both of, you know, in my journey altogether. Um, and, you know, each time it was really hard and, you know, I'm still fighting, I, you know, it, and it's because it's not because I'm trying to lose weight. I'm still fighting because there's always a better person inside. There's always room for growth. And so though losing weight is hard and I can vouch for it myself, maintaining is harder because it's a constant work. It's the constant decision to every single day make the choice that you're going to be healthy today, that you're going to make this a lifestyle, that you are going to make yourself a priority in every single day. So whether that's you fighting for a month, six months, or four years like I have just celebrated, it is a success and it is a a level of accomplishment to be so proud of because a lot of people can lose weight but it's very very hard to stay on that road and stay on that journey and continue to grow from there so just work on that that knowing that concept knowing that um, you know knowing that that's a fact you know you can't just sit there and get better you know reach those goals and then what's next and apply it you know that it, the fact that it applies to so many areas of life um, and that's what self-love is. That's what self-worth is. You know, when you see these selfies and, you know, quickly people think, oh, I can't stand, you know, all these girls take all these pictures and it's all over social media and stuff. It's like, please understand that there could be a whole lot more to that message than you know. And there's a lot of women, um, myself included, that years ago, you wouldn't see a selfie taken. You wouldn't see pictures of me. And if you did, um, I probably didn't want them on there or they were probably cropped a certain way to hide certain parts of my body. So when women can take a selfie and love ourselves and be proud, 
let's compliment that. You know, let's empower each other and say, hey, you know, good job on your workout today, or I love that lipstick on you, you know, or, you know, you look great with no makeup on. That's a big accomplishment because, you know what, there is power in selfies and unless you know the story and unless you know the struggle and the success that has came with it then I wouldn't just you know title it as you know a, a conceited selfie or you know things like that um, but I hope that you guys have a um, awesome weekend that is approaching and um, I will see you tomorrow with my sweaty selfie